So I just recently came to the realization that I had amassed a disproportionate amount of audio video equipment from Sony uh, as compared to other brands. So I thought I would make a video kind of going over my favorite pieces of Sony gear, how I use them, my experience with them, and uh, why I like them. So this is a Sony stereo microphone I purchased uh, for about $200 in 2003. The model number is uh, ECM MS957. Uh, I purchased it for recording um, band rehearsals. I plugged it into a hard disk recorder, this one from iRiver. Um, so recording uh, CD quality audio just in stereo um, works great. Um, although this is an XLR style plug here, it goes down to a three and a half inch stereo uh, mini plug, um, and um, it has a battery inside, so it doesn't require phantom power. Uh, has a rotatable capsule, so the audio can either be coming from this direction or this direction, and then you can uh, adjust the uh, pickup pattern from 90 degrees to 120 degrees. Um, one thing to note, although this looks like a standard XLR jack, it's actually proprietary because of the stereo signal. You need more pins, so it's got five pins there, uh, unlike a standard XLR Canon jack, which has three. Uh, comes with this uh, little tripod kind of thing, bipod. Um, it also came with a windscreen, but that uh, did eventually deteriorate and had to be thrown away. Um, but uh, this microphone uh, has really good response, picks up bass and highs really well. Uh, it's it's pretty good size. You can't really conceal this or anything if you wanted to like record, you know, surreptitiously. But uh, it uh, has good fidelity. Uh, it's worked great. It's you know, 15 years old and um, still performing very well. So I use this for uh, recording orchestras and marching bands and dancing recitals, anything that has, you know, music and stuff, I'll, I'll, I'll typically use this microphone um, along with others when recording uh, video. So this is yet another Sony stereo microphone. It's the ECM DS70P. I purchased this for about $50 in 2010. And the reason for that purchase was at the time I was using this Kodak pocket camera. Uh, which has only a mono internal microphone um, but has a, a jack for a stereo external microphone and I was recording band performances and other things whether stereo sounds or music and I wanted to get higher fidelity sound and get a stereo image so this served that purpose well. Uh, nowadays I pretty much just use it as a lapel microphone. It did come with this lapel clip which is removable and that uh, makes that nice. Um, and this is just an extension cable, so if you want to plug it just directly into a phone or a, a small camera, that's all. You, that's the minimum size, and this does fold if you need it to. Um, it doesn't rotate though. It's like it's kind of odd, but when you put it on this this camera, you know you don't really get a stereo image that way. So I'd use an elbow. You know, you only get front to back. You can't get left and right. So. This uh, microphone does pick up a lot of cable noise. I don't know if that's the fault of the microphone or this stiff extension cable that it came with, but uh, if the cable does rub on clothing or anything else, it really does pick that up rather well. It also did not come with a windscreen, um, so I just use a dead cat from another microphone when I want to be sure it doesn't pick up any air conditioning or other wind noise. Also, if you do decide you want to buy one of these. Make sure you get the official Sony product. There are a lot of knockoffs uh, that are available online and uh, reportedly they don't sound as good. This little guy, it's not really pro audio equipment, but I do use it um, when I want to record just voices and I don't care about getting stereo. This is a digital voice recorder. Uh, the model number is ICD PX820. Bought it for about 50 bucks in 2011. Still works great. Um, I did lose the battery door, but the batteries stay in just fine, don't need tape or anything. Um, but at some point, yeah, I lost the battery cover. Anyhow, um, stores, I forget how many hours of audio and compressed formats and 
um, very reliable and sounds pretty good. So this little guy is my first Sony camera of any kind. Uh, it's the model number HDR-AS100V and it's the first of kind of their newer generation of action cams. The, the ones prior to this were like a dark brown or gray color uh, and I think these are the first of a new series which had new image processing and image stabilization. Um, the reason why I purchased this primarily at the time was I was recording a lot of volleyball tournaments and I wanted something that had a wider angle uh, something that had image stabilization um, and built-in stereo microphone uh, was important to me and this had all those capabilities. Um, it also had Wi-Fi which meant that I could put this on top of like a 13-foot pole and still monitor what it was looking at from like a, an iPad or a cell phone um, and adjust you know the, the what it's pointing at uh, without being able to see through the camera itself. So. Um, it actually does not have any kind of display. The only way to see what the camera is looking at is through that Wi-Fi connected device. Um, also, there's no zoom of any kind. Um, has very limited image controls. I think it has like a neutral and a um, pro color or something like that. A couple modes. Um, it has a special underwater mode, uh, and then. Um, the white balance is automatic always. There's no way to manually set or uh, customize the white balance in any way, which has been a problem once or twice. So after using it for volleyball, I decided to give it a try underwater, and it did come with an underwater housing. Uh, unfortunately, I learned after using it that it's really not that usable. The, the wa underwater housing that it comes with has a rounded lens, which makes everything very foggy. If you really want to get clear pictures underwater, you have to spring for another component. Um, that is the MPKAS3. This cost me about $50 back in 2014. And then the flotation uh, was another $18. So um, that ensures that if you drop it, it will float to the surface rather than sink. Uh, so the camera goes inside here, has a nice flat lens and that gives you your clear pictures underwater which really do look good um, but again another fifty plus dollars um, I bought other accessories for it but these are really the ones that matter um, it's it served me well um, a couple of things have been a little bit disappointing it does support uh, XAVC S mode I think it's called uh, there's a couple of advantages it's higher uh, bit rate so the image quality is better, the video quality is better. Uh, it also will record more than four gigabytes in a single file, so you don't have multiple files that you have to um, splice together when you're editing or, or uploading. Um, but uh, when I record onto XAVCS, I've had lost videos. More than once I've had corrupted files that I couldn't even open or restore in any way. And I've never had that in the traditional MP4 mode. So I've always used it in the MP4 mode once I learned uh, that lesson and uh, lost some valuable footage. Um, and that's with the latest firmware. So I don't know, I think it's a, a bug that they never quite fixed. And um, another disappointment was the inside plastic piece that goes to this power button uh, or record button um, power you can actually power it on with these side buttons here um, but the inside plastic broke uh, in here it's still connected but it won't actually start recording or do any of the functions that are, are normally uh, enacted when you push this button. So I, I've had to either remotely via Wi-Fi uh, start and stop recording or uh, actually open this up which it still works when you open that up and then press this little uh, metal um, piece here with like a key or some kind of you know something pointy. Um, so it's a little bit of a, a hack but replacing this door is just not worth it. It costs about as much to replace the camera. So uh, there is a newer version, a couple newer versions. Of course, they go to 4K now, but there's a, a um, another 1080 uh, version of this camera. The the newest, I think, is the 300V. Um, so it has um, that version has better image quality and numerous other imp improvements. But it also has uh, customizable white balance, which is a feature that I'm looking forward to getting at some point when I upgrade to that camera. But um, this one, I've, I've, I don't even know how many hundreds of hours I've recorded on this camera, both above and underwater. So 
Um, it's worked great, um, other than that little plastic piece and then that other bug I mentioned with the XAVCS mode. So this here is the second Sony camera that I ever bought. It is a DSC HX 400V. I paid about three hundred dollars for this camera in 2015. Um, although it's really a still camera, I primarily bought this for recording video. It has a, a incredible optical zoom distance, like 50 times zoom. Um, it does have kind of a small sensor. I think it's a one third inch sensor. Uh, so you're not going to get that great of still pictures if you did use it for that. I mean, they're okay, but if you really zoom in, you'll see the lack of detail um, and a lot of noise. If there's low noise or low light, it introduces a lot of noise. Um, it's classified as a bridge camera, so this, the lens is not removable. Um, like I said, it does kind of have that super zoom capability. So if you really zoom in, the lens cap no cable or anything so you don't want to lose that but uh, the, the lens really goes out there and reaches out and you can take decent pictures or video of the moon if you like um, has a tiltable LCD screen here so that's pretty nice um, anyway for three hundred dollars it's a very decent video camera um, of course it will stop recording at about 29 minutes because it's not technically a camcorder uh, so if you're going to record longer pieces this may not work for you or you'll have to manually restart recording it also breaks files up on four gigabyte boundaries um, one feature I really did like is it shares the same battery as this camera so I have a kind of a large collection of these batteries and they're interchangeable between both cameras so that's a nice feature that I liked um, it does not have an external microphone input, so if you want to use a higher quality microphone, um, there's an option using this proprietary shoe, um, but it, the internal microphone is decent, it's stereo, um, has pretty good uh, wind noise cancellation, um, but mainly I got it just for the video. Portion. Not really. I don't really use the audio from this camera that much, but I will get into the audio options um, when I introduce the next item. So the next item I want to show you is another Sony stereo microphone. Uh, this one, the ECM XYST1M. I paid about ninety dollars for this in two thousand eighteen. Uh, is this microphone is specifically designed for attaching to cameras? Uh, it goes on Sony's proprietary shoe. And then turn that to lock it down. So these are the microphones here. Uh, they're adjustable as far as the spread. Really two positions, wide and narrow. Uh, it has a built-in low-cut filter. Uh, it also has, interestingly, this what they call a line out jack, but you can actually attach another external microphone here and it will mix it into the input from these microphones. So if you want to record from two external microphones, being this and another, you can do that and it works. Um, this will also allow you to use this microphone with a non-Sony camera or a Sony camera that's not compatible, doesn't have a compatible shoe, you can use a cable from here into the uh, input jack on the camera if it has one. Uh, again, it's a stereo microphone, so it's designed for a stereo input into the camera. So one thing I'd like to mention about this microphone is that when you attach it to the camera, it makes it extremely sensitive to wind noise. Uh, I found that it's basically not useful as it is. You have to use the included windscreen. Um, some people call this a dead cat, but you just uh, pop that on there like so, and that takes care of most of your wind noise, uh, also enabling the low cut filter will help a little bit, um, but you pretty much have to use it in this scenario all the time. Uh, even inside, if there's the slightest amount of breeze on those uh, capsules, uh, it just picks it up and ruins your audio. So um, it's a good thing they included that because you really have to have it. Uh, another thing they included, which is kind of unusual, is this little piece of rubbery plastic um, if you have a camera that has a door over the shoe and the door rubs against the microphone, 
because the microphone's kind of springy. That could, I guess, cause some interference noise, and this is supposed to push that door back, like uh, keeping it from rubbing. If you don't have that camera, you don't need this. I don't have that camera, whatever camera that is, where the door rubs against the microphone. So you don't need this little guy. It doesn't really do anything. So the last car in this seemingly endless train of Sony products is also the newest, uh, for me anyway, it's the HDR CX900. Uh, this is a kind of traditionally styled camcorder. Uh, it's got the flip out LCD screen, um, it's got the camcorder uh, dimensions and handle built in. It's a little bit bigger than today's average camcorder, but not too much bigger than my old Panasonic uh, from the early 2000s. Um, but this uh, camera, I bought it because it has very good low light performance. It has a one inch sensor, um, has a very good image uh, stabilization built in, um, has um, I think 5.1 or at least maybe just 5 channel uh, microphone. I just use stereo but uh, it sounds pretty good. Um, it, it also supports external microphones, um, has this the shoe, um, so you can use that same uh, XY microphone I demonstrated on the other camera. I'll grab it here. And if you use this, there's no cabling or anything. You just put it on and, and that's that. Um, and it does improve the audio quality a bit over the internal microphone. Again, I mentioned the uh, wind pattern, the wind uh, noise pickup issue, so you do have that to deal with. But um, I found that the, the manual controls on this, um, the options as far as uh, you know, setting the exposure and the white balance, and those features have really helped. Um, also has focus peaking and zebra striping and, and features that you, know, you don't get in, in a lot of uh, consumer camcorders. So the quality is not only spectacular, but it kind of helps you in creating better videos if that's your uh, interest, if that's what you want to do, create something that looks more professional. This is kind of bordering the professional uh, line of cameras from Sony. I think this is the pinnacle of their prosumer level camera, or at least in 1080. There's a 4K version of the same camera. It looks, looks almost identical, um, but of course more expensive. Uh, this camera cost me $1,000 about a month ago, uh, so that was like August uh, 2018. Anyway, very happy with it, and uh, this concludes my purchases of Sony for now. That's a good YouTube video! You're terrible!